Polony herdsmen are militants fighting ethnic war, says Sheikh Gumi. And the Islamic group warns missionary school owners to take their business to other states amid hijab controversy in Kwara State. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cohn. Renowned Islamic cleric Sheikh Ahmad Gumi has insisted that the armed Fulani herdsmen are not bandits but militants fighting for ethnic survival. He also warned that if care is not taken, notorious terror group um, Boko Haram may infiltrate bandits in the country. While well, discussing this topic with me this evening is former Commissioner of Police Lawrence Alobi, former Deputy Governor of the CBN, Obadiah Mailafia, and the Director of Strategy and Communications of the Coalition of Northern Groups, Samaila Musa. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having me, having thank all of us. Yeah, Great. I'm going to start with um, uh, Mr. Obadiah. What are your thoughts on the Sheikh's statements, his comments about these people fighting an ethnic war, not necessarily criminals. <laughs> Mr. Badaya, can you hear me? Oh, we lost him. Okay, Ismaila, can you take on that question? What are your thoughts? Okay, can you take that again, please? What's the question? Yeah, I'm asking what your thoughts are on Sheikh Gumi's statements, saying that these people are not necessarily criminals, but they're fighting an ethnic war. Uh, okay, um, uh, first let me start with uh, commending the Sheikh for the initiative, I mean, for taking this uh, uh, noble path, because you see, when you uh, seem not to have a government in place, then individuals will try to uh, see what they can do to salvage the situation. And, you know, the, the fact that he didn't join the bad wagon of uh, folding uh, hands and he tried to be proactive, you know, is commendable. But back to your question, you know, uh, some of them, some of the bandits are actually not criminal. Uh, you know, you need to go back to the genesis of this whole banditry. You know, some persons came in from uh, outside the country. We have had issues where, I mean, uh, situations where people uh, even in the place of like governors, I mean, the last time uh, Governor Erufai also made mention of that to say some of these guys are actually from Nigeria Republic, you know. But that having been said or established by those governors, I mean, using whatever uh, 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 indices, the fact that some of these uh, bandits got their cattle wrestled. In some cases, where because we had an interface with the governor of Zamfara, where he told us uh, what prompted him to start granting this amnesty to some of us bandits, who immediately he came on board as the governor. Uh, they came forward to submit their arms, and you know, I'm sure he didn't mention that, part, but I'm sure compensations were paid. He said uh, some of the testimonies were mind-boggling. You know, uh, some of them got their lands taken away from them by some traditional rulers. You know, some of them, you know, their, their, their cattle were rustled. Some of them, their wives were taken away from them because they felt, oh, these are nobodies, these are riffraffs and all of that. And that actually informed, uh, you know, some of those decisions. Of course, nobody is backing uh, criminality, but sometimes when you know, when someone is, becomes idle, he becomes the devil's workshop. Hmm. So to that extent, I can tell you that, well, uh, what he said, because I also saw this afternoon where what interview he held with leadership newspaper, where he felt he was completely, I mean, uh, it was put out of context. It wasn't everything he said that was actually captured. But I, because I was in a hurry, I wasn't able to read that interview in total. Hmm. But that he, what he, you know, in essence is that there are some criminal elements among these bandits. And those are the ones that we need to front at. 
Some okay. of this, uh, we also had uh, uh, in it interface with some of these uh, uh, bandits the, uh, when we went to Katina, up when those Kankara, uh, 303 uh, 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 pupils were kidnapped. We're abducted, you know, yeah. we also met with some of these uh, uh, bandits, you know, and they also told us that, as, the, as a matter of fact, uh, they know each other. Like, majority of these guys, uh, some of these bandits, are actually not from Nigeria. But you see, that again, it's absurd because if you have a country that is supposed to uh, uh, man its borders and it refuses to do so, in the case of Nigeria, where all our borders are porous, mm -hmm. you have all manners of criminal elements coming in unchecked. You understand? So the, what, they, what, they, what they shake actually embarked on, it's a, a, a good step in the right direction. Okay. But of course, granting amnesty to all this to all of them is what is wrong. Uh, he probably okay. is trying to say you can grant amnesty to the ones that are we have established that oh maybe after being profiled you know that these ones are okay. actually ours here and they have a genuine cause for agitation what? and so we need to meet their demands in order to make them leave. We will come to the, we will come to the amnesty part, but let uh, we're still trying okay. to you know lay the foundation on this. I, I'm going to come to you, Mr. Badaya, and then CP Lawrence because he obviously is a security uh, expert, Mr. Badaya. Um, he said, and I quote, Sheikh Gumi, I'm going to quote this um, directly. I can say categorically that they, meaning the bandits, are not Boko Haram. But, if, uh, but we have to be very careful because if pressure, the pressure is too much, Boko Haram being more international, more connected, or maybe more richer, um, might influence the bandits. And he also said that, they may be infiltrated. He said, they are ready to lay down their arms. So he's asking for a negotiation of sorts with these bandits. And I'm wondering, how feasible is it? Well, C.P. Lawrence, I think that we lost Mr. Badaya again. Nigeria is a country that, yes, of course, like um, Islam Ismaila said, Governor El Rufai of Kaduna State had at some point paid these bandits. Um, sometimes we hear that people have negotiated for, you know, um, people who've been kidnapped to be returned to us. But is this a good idea to negotiate with these people? Is this not a call for more and more people to take on these kinds of, you know, um, banditry, knowing that at the end of the day, if some people are abducted, there might be money exchanging hands or negotiations of sort? Yeah, thank you very much uh, for having me today and uh, this, uh, this, this issue is very topical considering the issue with bandits. Who is a bandit? You say a friend to decide. A bandit is, is a bandit is, is a bandit to protect love and property or to destroy, destroy love and property. And yes, Mr. Ismail has confirmed that some of them came from outside the country and he admitted their borders. I'm going to allow our country to be invaded by, by, by foreigners, by, 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 by these bandits who come has lived to be out, come from outside the country. You don't legalize illegality. The criminals are criminals, whatever, whatever guys they come, whether Boko Haram, whether bandits, whether kidnappers, they are criminals. And they deal with according to the law. If we now begin to, to say, okay, let's negotiate with bandits and give them amnesty, give them ransom, whatever, and, and so forth. Look at what is happening to kidnapping. Kidnapping now is a lucrative business because they know the way they negotiate, they, they, they'll be giving money, they now they, they take the tune. We should not negotiate with any, any criminal. We should deal with them, and the government has the power, has the, the political will, the instrument of, of violence. That's only the only thing that. The government has issued a ban to deal with criminality in this country. And Section 14 of the Constitution provides that. The Mr. Lobby, of government I, I, I totally, I totally want to agree with you that the government has what it takes to deal with criminality and crime in this country. But it's shocking for those of us who are on this side of the divide when we realize that a sheikh who is not trained in combat or security in any way is able to get through to these bandits and even negotiate or be a go-between them and the government. But then we have security officials or officers and men who have un been unable to fish out these bandits, talk less of having to 
get all of the people that they've kidnapped or abducted in their custody. So really, is this, is this something that government can really handle? Because these are questions that we've been asking over and over again. One man was able to trace these bandits, get to them, have a conversation, yet our security forces are still strategizing. No, I think, I think if, what the government should have done uh, to interrogate Gumi, how did he know them? Was the relationship between him and, and, and these bandits? That's excellent because we have to find out how is, is, he, is, is he an accomplice or is he, is he, why did he know them? The government should be better interested about him, about what else, and how is, he, how is he linked to them and so forth. But the intelligence, intelligence unit of this country, the DSS, the, 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 the defense intelligence, uh, police, the police have all these intelligence issues, unit should profile him and find out what is the relationship with, with these bandits. What okay. is the with the bandits? Okay. Mr. Badaya you know, is joining and, us. And saying that uh, the bandits, bandits are not criminals. You know, they say bandits are not criminals. They are criminals. They are the, actually criminals. And criminality is, the crime is a transgression against the people of Nigeria. Hmm. It's like, so the Nigerians should write and say no. The government should say no and stand and let it assert, the government should assert, assert itself and dictate the tune. Okay. Let me go to Mr. Badaya. We, we have him joining us on the phone. Um, Mr. Badaya, Sheikh Gumi also made another statement. I'd like to quote him. Um, he said that um, there was an incident that happened in Zamfara State some time ago where Fuller knew themselves caught some elements of Boko Haram and pre um, presented them to the government of the day at the time. Um, so he's saying that they're not Boko Haram. They are citizens. They recognize authority. What do you think about this statement by the Sheikh, because he's trying to make a case that these people are not necessarily criminals. They are fighting for, you know, their rights. It's an ethnic war of sorts. He called them militants. So I'm asking, what do you think he means by this saying that, you know, uh, the actions of the bandits are not criminal? Really, um, should the things that they've done in the past be excused? Well, um, um, <laughs> I don't know where to start. Uh, I, I feel very alarmed at the direction of the whole discourse that we're holding. Somebody, one of uh, you know the people on this platform, came out to say that some of the bandits are not criminals, and we've heard this kind of nonsense before. If somebody said, oh, you know, not all of these Boko Haram people are terrorists. Not all of them are killers. I don't know how people reason. What is the definition of a bandit? I hope I don't have to bring a dictionary and open it to you and then say, look, my friend, this is the definition of a bandit according to, uh, you know, the, the standard dictionary. Mm -hmm. A bandit is a robber or a thief. If you look at the synonyms, it has synonyms like brigand, freebooter. All of these are criminal characterizations of what a bandit is. So when you come and you say, uh, uh, I wouldn't want to use expletives, but you use terms that show that you don't have basic education, then I, I find it just very uh, a waste of my really precious time. So, so, a, a so Mr. Badaya, is, you're of the opinion a, 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 that they're all... A, a, a brigand. So are you of the opinion please, that they're all criminals and they should face me, justice? Is that sorry, what, can you not interrupt me, please? I, I'm sorry, I'm just asking a question. I, I, I apologize. Are you of the opinion that they're all criminal and they should be made to face the, the, the law? Yes, they, they, are, they are not just, they're, not, they're not just criminals. A criminal is, is a general term that is quite commonplace. They're terrorists. They are people who use violence and fear to kill, to rape, and to, you know, destroy entire communities. And please, let's not compare it 
with the Niger Delta. And some people have tried to do that. How many people did Niger Delta people kill? You wouldn't count up to 20, actually. And among the people they kidnapped, they kidnapped mostly white people. I'm not saying that is right either. I was about to ask they were very clear right. in their targets. Mm -hmm. So these people are not fighting for any justice. This is part of the jihad that has been waged on, a, on an unarmed and defenseless people. It is a global policy of some people to, you know, win over Nigeria by force of arms, uh, to, and to use fear, kidnapping, and intimidation, you know, to enforce a policy that the uh, former president, Unisha Gobasanjo, called a policy of Islamization and a policy of Fulanization. We are going to resist them and we will defeat them. But, but uh, out of curiosity, how do you Islamize or try to win people over through violence and fear? I'm, I'm guessing that if you were going to make me like something that you believe in, you would go about it a different way instead of just, you know, killing and uh, abducting people. I, I'm, I'm really curious as to this theory of Islamization that you brought up. Should that, I mean, if there, were be, if there were to be any, would they be going about it this way? Because I'm not sure if I would want to believe in a God that says kill people and instill fear. Are you asking me? Well, yes, because you, you spoke about the Islamization. Well, of course, why not? Why not? Why not? Look, there is, I don't know whether you came across uh, a statement by a top American general that Islamic Jihad had moved to Nigeria. I don't know whether he came across that. It was public. It was a, a public statement that they had moved across the Sahara. They had come into Nigeria. They were spreading all over and going further into the rainforest. And they were going to enact a big showdown. So there is a global Jihad going on. And this global Jihad moved from Afghanistan to Somalia, from Somalia to Baghdad and Syria. And when they were defeated there, they moved to Sahel and they joined the arms of Gaddafi when he fell from power. A lot of arms were freely available. Now they've used this arm, they conquered Timbuktu until the French came in and stopped them. And now they are moving further south uh, and coming through Niger and coming to Nigeria. Okay. They have a, a policy, they have an agenda. And, uh, you know, some people in this country have allowed the borders in the north to be widely open. They're even building a railway to Zendera. Hmm. If that is not a calculated policy, please tell me what it is. Okay, I'll come tell back to you. I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you, Mr. Obadiah. If you, I'll just come if back you to borrow you. money, sorry, madam, if you borrow money, borrow loans in billions from, from, China, from China, and then you build a railway to another man's country using borrowed money, which Nigerian children in future must pay back with interest. And you build it to another man's country to, 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 to benefit another man. I don't know what to call such such, All right. Such people. Let me go back to Ismaila. Um, Ismaila, critics have said that this issue of herders versus farmers has been highly politicized in Nigeria. In fact, um, the governor of Benue State, Samuel Autumn, um, recently has warned, in fact, that was a story, a major story uh, today, that herdsmen who are disobeying the laws in his state um, on the use of arms, he's asking that if they be in opposition of that law, they can go to Bauchi State, where the governor had made an excuse earlier on about these people carrying weapons to protect themselves. He's saying that they can move to that particular state. And we also know that the People's Democratic Party had waded in into this matter. So a lot of critics are saying that this particular issue is not dealt with the way it should be dealt with because it's being overly politicized. Um, is this politics at play or people really just taking laws into their hands? Okay, it's both actually. Uh, people are taking laws into their hands and also uh, it's been politicized. 
Uh, number one is uh, uh, the, the, the governor of Bauchi, I think uh, he was just being on court with some of his uh, statements, you know, because that is actually uh, not called for, you know, because you also need to be very sensitive to the plight of the people who are losing loved ones, uh, you know, uh, due to this fracas. So really, uh, it is not right to say that. But uh, I haven't said that. I think the, the basics is that, you see, uh, it doesn't seem there's a government in place. And that's why, you know, this takes me back to the first, my first statement to say that uh, Sheikh Gumi stepped in because it doesn't seem there's any government in place. We cannot feel the president. This is the most uninspiring, uninspiring leadership I've witnessed as young as I am in this country. You know, there is no clear court uh, any but should it be the of, uh, job of the president? I mean, those states where these things are happening have governors, they have commissioners of police, they have... Yeah, they have governors. So, so, see, and so should the, 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 And I'm not the, in any way, I'm not in any way in, holding brief for Mr. President, but if the governments of these states had moved fast or their body language seemed more like they wanted to get rid of these issues early enough, don't you think you would have given the presidency no, no, no. See, some... This, this whole issue, if we can keep throwing it at the table of the governors, this is going to remain for 100 years, more to come. The president needs to take it over as his sole responsibility. is the number one. His number one assignment as a president is to secure lives and properties. The fact that this... Uh, uh, the Fulani headsmen are moving from one state to the other. It has made it to now be something that is above what the governor can handle on his own. So it should be a federal government issue now. Because, it, I, I mean, there's a level at which I can maybe probably I'm the governor of uh, FCT, for instance. You know, there's a level of what I can control within my domain. If there are no, uh, uh, you know, fence borders around my state, really, I cannot control how these people move in or go out. I beg to differ, the, the, the Ismaila. I'm act. sorry, I beg to differ. The Ondo State Government put their foot yeah. down, made it clear that mm -hmm. if you are a herds, if you're a herdsman, you have to abide by the rules and the regulations of the state. You cannot be grazing on government reserve. And this is a government that is responsive to the plight of its people. So when you're saying that, oh, it's, it's a bit too much for state governors, but that's supposed to be a start because they also took on oaths to protect lives and property. So uh, you we can't really put it past the, them. The problem, why we having this bickering over and over, you know, why we, it's because about having a, a ethnic coloration is because the federal government refused to take action. If the federal government is the one enacting or bringing out these laws, there would be no section of the society that will be feeling aggrieved. And you, you see, the issue, I mean, when Ondo State Governor came out with that, so many uh, uh, criticisms. You understand that? So it we was having an ethnic coloration because the quality was getting heated. It was if it was the president who had come out to make such pronouncements, that would have doused the whole tension. There wouldn't have been any tension because it now makes it look like, oh, it's because Ondo is a Yoruba land, and that is why the Fulanis are, uh, I mean, are, are perceived to be a northerners. Well, and I, that's why we're having this. I, I, wanna, I, wanna go to Mr. I, wa I really want to go to Mr. Lawrence, but I, I, I'm, I'm trying to hold myself back. He did not just put out that statement to only Fulani herdsmen. The Ibera people were part of that statement. So the ethnic no, coloration I mean, that you're that's looking for... That's just a political statement. That's just a political statement. Everybody knows in Nigeria... I'm not a politician, by the way. I'm going by the facts men. that were in that it, press I'm release. Not, you can buy into that. You can buy into that. I'm not going to buy into that. Okay. Everybody in Nigeria knows that the headsmen are Fulani. So for anybody to say, Ibira, come on. They are, they are farmers, please. The, okay. Everybody All right. knows in Nigeria that the people who move their cattle from one part of the country to the other... Uh, according to the season and time, are the full other people. So okay. if anybody is trying to not give it another interpretation, it's just being political. But what I'm saying in essence is that this should have been the responsibility of the federal government have been issue. Because right. previous government probably right. have been do doing playing politics around this. And that's why we keep having this thing over and over. It's not going to end. It's going to be endless. But what, okay. the, 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 what, what the presidency should consider is that People are dying every day due to the lingering of this crisis. Okay. That let, should let, be let, arrested let, immediately. Let's talk more about the security of it. Um, Mr. Alobi, the Sheikh has also said that bandits only kill for revenge um, and have only killed a few people accidentally. Underline the word accidentally. So the kidnappings, I'm asking now, the kidnappings, the killings, the maimings, all of the things that have happened, 
um, the rice farmers who were killed on their rice farms, these were accidental? You're a security expert. Please educate us on how these, how killings of any sorts are accidental. You see, it is absurd. I don't know. It's Gumi with the in the in the, in the, in the Uh, Mr. Lawrence, can you hear us? Oh, I think we have issues with that. Let's let's go to Mr. Bataya and. Um, you feel where they are fighting, killing? Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we lost you for a second. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. I said, is Gobi saying that those people are fighting as in a kind of revenge? The revenge. You see, they with on the battlefront where they are fighting. You see, they are fighting along with along with the band or the who's who they are fighting to notice these are this. These are criminals. You know, you see, something like a veil. It beclouds our sense of sense of judgment. Whether making politicing or not, we should face the, the truth. Truthfulness is the foundation of all views. These people are criminals. If whether they are full or whatever tribe, whatever race they come, they are criminals. Should be dead really not not looking at it from the neck. Or religious, religious point of view, like criminals and the government develop the, 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 the political will to deal with it. The president is commanding the the arms of the, of the Republic of Nigeria. He has a political, they have this, the power, the authority, and he to make you to ensure that these bandits are brought to their knees and that the mental law is being maintained, law of is being protected. Both the government, the Mr. and the, all the governors swore an swore to an oath to the constitution that they will protect and defend the constitution and the protect land and property. Now that Mr. Mr. Somebody saying that there's, that there's, there's no there's a government, the point is that there's failure in governance. They yeah. failed. The government is doing what it ought to do. You know, the government need to turn up and say no to this because that's why they were voted. Nigerian on Nigerian voted, Mr. President, the governor. We have asked these crimes have, have been committed, those governors as, as a duty. I mean, Mr. President has a duty. He's a commission of federal people of Nigeria. He will vote in Nigeria to protect Nigeria, to protect our country, be sure law and order is being maintained, protect life and property, so that we live, Nigeria live in peace and without any threat to their life or threat, threat to their property. Okay. So I think the government should stand, stand, stand up and say no. Say no to this, and then you all right. start no because, like it is not, it's not a, 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 a government affair because the gov, the citizens are the beneficiary of a safe environment, and when they see security, when they like it is today, the citizens will suffer. So therefore, it, 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 it could be citizens to also stand up and rise up. It. We must not allow it to happen. Okay. These men are not spirit. I wish I had time. I wish spirit. I had time, uh, Mr. Lobby. If I had time, I would have taken you up on the citizens rising up. You saw what happened to us October 20, 2020, when citizens rose up. You know where we are. And remember what happened just a few weeks ago when citizens rose up again, um, you know, to, to speak about the, the issues that they have with the government. They were shut down, but that's not the issue. I'm coming to you, Mr. Badaya, because we're out of time. Um, we still have schoolboys who were abducted and some staff of the school uh, in captivity with the bandits as we speak. But then there, there has been reports that there are divisions even in the camp of these bandits as to when these people can be released. Don't also forget that they have also made their demands asking that some of their people be released to them and then they can give us the students that were abducted and their, their teachers um, as um, an exchange, a form of exchange. Um, I'm asking, when we continue paying these ransoms or doing what these bandits ask us to do, how does that make us look generally, especially in a country where we're trying to fight crime, we're trying to fight Boko Haram, for a government that rode on the wings of putting an end to terrorism in Nigeria or bringing it down to its barest minimum? Is this not a welcome call for more and more people to line up behind these bandits and take advantage of the weaknesses of the government? Well, to be honest with you, um, Russia had a lot of problems with terrorism. I don't know why we keep calling them bandits. They are not bandits. They're terrorists. They are out on an agenda, on a mission, and they are using terror as their weapon. 
And because this is so, we have to find a way to fight terrorism. Vladimir Putin in Russia had one policy, never to negotiate with terrorists. He never, never did. If you capture a million people, you can kill them and eat them. Putin will never kill you. He will bring his armed forces. He will confront you. He will come till he exterminates you. And today, Russia doesn't have terrorists. That has been policy. And I think it's about high time we implemented such a policy, never to negotiate with them. And appeasement doesn't work. We've been paying billions to these to this terrorists. You can imagine the federal government paid a hundred billion to Miete Atla, which is a terrorist organization. They have agreed that they have, you know, you know, been tacitly approving of a lot of these killings going on, a lot of these kidnappings. Let's not try to whitewash. Let's not try to de- deodorize it. The whole thing stinks, and it stinks of official complicity. Okay. and of playing kid gloves. And let's be very honest, I was very disappointed with Bala Mohammed of, of Polchi State. He has made such arrogant statements before. He once said on national television that the whole Fulanese of the whole Nigeria. Nigeria belongs to the Fulanese of the whole world. He said that on Channel TV. Now, that's, that's a statement that is almost reasonable. He cannot say such a thing. And uh, I was told that allegedly, when he was asked by his friends why he made that statement, he said, look, I have a case with EFCC. I mean, the PDP, I have a case with the EFCC. I have to say this thing so that, you know, uh, they will be merciful unto me. Well, we need, we, we're out of time, um, and Mr. Then, Mr. Bataya. So the governor, Quickly, in closing. governor or Tom is completely right. Okay, in closing. You so. have never been, if you go to Benue, you see the IDPs, you see the suffering of people. In- I got 200 died, you know, villagers with priests and church people, saving, saving mass at 5 a.m., wiped away. Unfortunately, we I have mean, to... The, the governor has a right this conversation. to I'm fight so for his people. I'm so sorry we're out of time. We want to thank you all for being part of the conversation, but time is not our friend. Uh, we thank you, Commis- former Commissioner of Police, Lawrence Alobi, former Deputy Governor of the CBN, Obadiah um, Mailafia, and Director of Strategy and Communications, Coalition of Northern Groups, Samaila Musa. Thank you, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. All right, well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, Islamic leaders warn that he would not fold its hands and watch Muslim students being persecuted in Kwara State. Stay with us to find out more.